Good afternoon, y'all, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking all about toy haulers. Behind me is our 2020 Grand Design Momentum 397TH. It's a toy hauler, and it's been our home on the road for the last three years while we travel full-time as a family. Now, everything about this toy hauler is awesome, but everything that is awesome about the toy hauler are also the same things that make it a challenge and not so awesome. So what could not be awesome about a toy hauler? Well, let's start with the first and most obvious one. It's huge! Just how big is it? Well, let's measure it and find out. All right, our tape measure is only 30 feet, so we're gonna have to move and adjust. All right, come up here. All right, so it came out to a 44 foot long. It's even bigger when you measure it. Now let's add how long we are when we're hooked up to the truck. So we're at least just standing right there at the middle of the axle, which is where the hitch is. We're gonna measure. How long are we when the truck is hooked up? 18 more feet. So that puts us at 62 feet long when the truck and the trailer are hooked up. And there's one more thing you have to measure if you wanna fully utilize a toy hauler. So now we know that we're 62 foot long when we're driving down the highway. So you need a site that's at least 62 foot long just to fit the truck and the trailer when they're hooked up. But if you wanna enjoy this toy hauler door right here, you gotta add extra space. So if you want the toy hauler to be able to come down, you have to add another eight feet. So now we're up to a 70 foot site and that's when the truck's still hooked up. It's not just long, it's also tall. The top of our AC unit is at 13 feet, six inches. Since this is our home that we live and travel in full time, we needed all the space we could have. But being this big creates challenges. Challenges that we were not prepared for and didn't plan for until we started traveling. The biggest challenge with having a rig this big is you don't just hook up to it and drive off. Everything has to be planned out. There's no winging it with a big rig. You have to plan everything out, including the roads you take to get where you're going because you're 13 feet, six inches tall. You're also 62 foot long. So you're limited to where mostly 18 wheelers can go. That means you choose roads that 18 wheelers can drive down because you don't want low clearance situations. You also have to plan out where you're gonna stop and take your breaks. You can't just pull over on the side of the road and take a break anywhere. You have to pull over at rest areas or truck stops. Truck stops is another thing. That's about the only place you can fuel up your truck when you need it because you have this giant trailer behind you. Now, some gas stations you can fit under the awnings with the RV, but you're likely not gonna be able to maneuver around the pumps to avoid any situation. So you're limited to where you can drive and how you can drive when you have a rig this big. Not only do you have to plan out how and where you're driving, you have to plan where you're gonna park this thing. And being that big, limits what kind of parks you can go to. Automatically, you're out of national parks and you're out of most state parks. So you're stuck at RV type resorts to have enough space to enjoy the toy hauler. That usually means that you're in the biggest, most expensive sites because you are a big rig. So if you have a big rig, it's gonna cost you more to park it because you need so much space. You've already planned out how to navigate. You've already planned out where you're gonna park. You think your planning's over with? It is not. There's still more things you have to research because you are that big. One being, once you get inside the RV park, actually it starts before then, it starts when you leave the highway and get into the RV park. You start to do research on the entry and exit points of the RV park. Driving this thing down the highway is the easy part. It's once you leave the highway and try to get into the RV parks that it becomes a challenge. Coming off the road, you have to watch out for situations like this one we had in North Carolina. Gonna drag the pipe for sure. You're okay, you're just dragging pipe. Almost all of our problems with this trailer being that big happen inside the RV park. That was the entrance and the exit point, but here is a good example of inside the park. So this is our site right here. There's one problem. Look at this hill in front of the RV. This is a pull through site, but we're not gonna be able to pull out when we leave because when we start going up that hill and making the turn, there's a good chance we're gonna drag something on the bottom of the RV right there. The rear of the toy hauler might hit before the trailer gets up the hill and we might hit our bed rails because we're also turning. 
So this is another thing you need to consider that once you get where you're going, the challenges aren't over. They're actually just beginning. Having a huge RV is awesome for living in, but it requires extra steps and considerations when you make your travel plans, when you make your travel arrangements, when you do everything involving moving the truck and the RV, there's just more things to consider when you're doing that. Now, there's something else that goes along with being this big, and it's being this heavy. This thing is packed full of amenities and features, but the trade-off is it's a very heavy rig. It's got an onboard generator. It has two 30-pound bottles of propane for a total of 60 pounds of propane on board. It has three 7,000-pound axles with 14-ply G-rated tires. It has 60 gallons of gasoline on board, 30 for the generator and 30 for the toy. Since we don't have a toy, we have 60 gallons of gas for our generator. It has huge pass-through storage. It has a washer and dryer. It comes with a 12 gallon water heater and a 35,000 BTU furnace. It has three air conditioning units, one for the toy hauler, one for the living room, and one for the master bedroom. And one of the biggest features this thing has is its tank capacities. We can handle 108 gallons of gray water, 108 gallons of black water, and 160 gallons of fresh water. That's so much tank capacity. So what does having all these features mean? It means you're gonna be heavy. Most toy haulers start at 20K and go up. Ours is rated at 20,000 gross vehicle weight rating, and it's pretty heavy empty, but it's really heavy when it's full. And because of all these features and the fact that we live full time, it's very easy to make these things overweight so it's something you have to worry about when you decide to go full time is how heavy are you going to be and starting off with the toy hauler makes you heavy to begin with but once you fill it for your stuff it's going to be very heavy and you know our toy hauler is not the biggest ours is only rated at 20k they make 21,000 pound toy haulers they make 24,000 pound toy haulers and lux even has a 25,999 pound toy hauler so you can be much bigger than this but that brings to the next problem if you have something this big you're going to need something this big if you want your trailer to be that big your truck is going to have to be this big you're going to need a dually to pull a toy hauler i know there's guys out there who pull without them but i've heard from the old timers if your trailer has six wheels your trucks have six wheels we've even scaled this setup with that thing weighing right at 20,000 pounds and showed that this thing is on the upper limits of its gross vehicle rate rating so when that thing weighs 20k this one weighs 13.9 so if you have a bigger toy hauler you may have to have a bigger truck than just a 350 or a one ton version but having a big truck is not it you also need to upgrade the big truck because we had to put airbags on our truck in order to tow this thing without squatting so bad in the back. That's because these things come with a heavy pin weight, which is directly on the truck. Because you are so big and so heavy, when you're towing, your truck is gonna get horrible gas mileage. We get 18 miles a gallon without the trailer. We get eight miles a gallon when we're towing the trailer. The next thing to consider is because you are so big and so heavy, you're gonna require more maintenance and more repairs on your truck and your trailer the more you travel. All right, there is one positive to this thing being so big and so heavy. It tows amazing. You don't get blown around at all by the wind. It tracks very good. It's actually very easy to drive on the highway, but that's the only pro to being this big and heavy. It's big, it's heavy, but being that is what makes it so awesome and so useful for us as a full-time family on the road. If it wasn't big and it wasn't heavy, it wouldn't allow us to travel and do what we do. The next thing that is a problem with toy haulers is not just about toy haulers. It's about every RV ever made. It's this mattress right here. The mattress that comes in the stock RVs, especially this one in the master bedroom, is horrible from the factory. They shouldn't even give you a mattress. That's how bad it is. One of the first things we did was replace the stock one with an RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. We went with the Signature Hybrid and it's been the best thing we've ever done for our RV. And when it came time to make the girls room just as comfortable, we went with Brooklyn Bedding as well. But let me show you how the toy hauler section is different than say a normal fifth wheel because the toy hauler section is a big bonus feature on the double queen size beds. But let me tell you how they come from the factory and I'll show you what we did to make it work. This is one of the coolest features of a toy hauler and that is you have this Happy Jack bed system where you have a queen size bed up there and you have a queen size bed down here on the bottom and this all raises up out of the way. The problem is these aren't the mattresses that come on it. That one is about a four inch little pad that's not suitable for kids. And this one down here actually is 
couches that fold up out of the way and become a bed if you want to sleep on them. It's not flat at all. Like I tried to sleep on it one night, it does this at every intersection. So there's four bumps you have to sleep on if you want to sleep on there. So we ripped the Happy Jack out and we installed another queen size bed frame, like that one up there to match, and went with two queen size beds from Brooklyn Bedding. We went with the Dream Foam Essential Memory Foam in the eight inch model because it gives our girls two queen size beds and it also works whenever you stow it in the stowed position for travel day. That brings me to our next point. If you're looking to upgrade your mattress, we're giving one away right now. We've partnered with RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding to give away any mattress on their website. Any style, any size, any thickness, any firmness, any mattress from their website, we're gonna give directly to one of you guys out there. And all you gotta do to get entered to win is head over to pavenewpass.com, get yourself some merch, and get yourself entered to win your very own RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. So you have a toy hauler. You have an awesome master bedroom up there, and you have an awesome toy hauler room right here. And in order to have those two awesome rooms, you sacrifice here in the middle room, which is your living room and kitchen area. So this is ours. And ours is perfectly fine for us as a family. But if you're gonna have people over, toy haulers are not very good at entertaining. And that's because that's all you really have right there. You have two bar seats right there, and then you have the couch. And that's the only sitting area in this whole place. So ours actually came with a five couch all the way. We took out these two right here, slid it over, and made Buddy his little cage hangout area. You can also get a dinette that goes right there. But the dinette, wouldn't be good for adults. It'd be great for kids. Our kids could sit there and then me and Alicia could sit right here to eat. We love our kitchen, but it only works for us. If we want to have people over, we have to hang out outside because there's really no room inside of a toy hauler to entertain people. So the reason we chose a toy hauler is because we wanted the girls to have their own dedicated space at all times that didn't convert. Now their room converts from sleep mode to play mode but it doesn't convert from say a living room couch to a couch during the daytime. So their room is always their room. That's why we went with the toy hauler. We wanted dedicated spaces for the kids. We also wanted them to have a bathroom. That's the TV. But the other side of this wall right here, this little cutout, that's their bathroom, which takes away space in our living room. Now, there are toy haulers that do it better than some. Like there are some toy haulers that have some amazing living area, but if it's good in here, that means they gave up some space in the garage. We have one of the bigger garages out there. There are some toy haulers that have a better living area with some sectional and L-shaped couches, which are better for entertaining, but they give up space in the toy hauler, or they don't have a second bathroom. So there's always trade-offs for what you want. All in all, it's not a bad deal because we don't spend much time in the RV. So we basically only eat food here and hang out here when it's raining. The rest of the time, we're outside exploring. But before we started this, we didn't realize how much we were giving up in here to have that over there. And that brings us to the most important part of the toy hauler, the toy hauler section. And what makes toy haulers so awesome is they're so versatile. So the end user can use them how they want. We chose to make this a full-time room for our kids. So we have two full-size queen beds. We have this furniture permanently attached with all their toys and their clothes. We have more toys and clothes there, more toys and clothes there. We have a rug down so it doesn't feel like a garage, but this is how we made it ours and how we want to use it. We meet so many people who they actually use this to carry golf carts in here, motorcycles in here, trikes in here this is their garage and that's awesome because they store a bunch of things back here we've also met several people who have turned this into like their hobby or craft room we met this one lady this was her sewing room so they travel full time and this is where she sewed we met a guy who this was his woodworking area he did woodworking crafts all the time back here so that's what's good about toy haulers you can convert this space into whatever you want it to be so this is how our toy hauler looks during sleep time we have this one bed down right here and that bed is still up and we have all the toys laid down under the bed. Now we're gonna convert it into daytime mode. And this is daytime mode. So we have the bottom bunk lifted up and locked into position. And all the girls' toys are lined up around the toy hauler and this is their own space at all times. So this is their room during daytime mode. Check out this clip of what it looks like on travel day and how this room converts a third way to travel down the highway. So this is what 
travel mode looks like for those of you who have never seen it right there so we have two pack and plays full of all the stuff that goes up there and up there and almost all their toys get put in there we have a whole bunch of other stuff from the rv in there and of course we are still traveling with these giant unicorn bean bags i've shown you what sleep mode looks like what daytime mode looks like and what travel mode looks like now let's talk about the most amazing thing about this toy hauler and that's this back door right here And there we have it. The most awesome thing with a toy hauler is this balcony right here, which adds to the toy hauler section. So not only do the girls have their own space, they have the best room in the house. They have their own outdoor balcony, complete with these three season doors. I know, not really three season, but we do have the better version. There are some that just have the, uh, it's like a vinyl material. These are actually, glass when we first got this toy hauler we thought every single day we would have this balcony down we have chairs and tables out here we have the awning out we've just been enjoying the patio life turns out we don't use the rear patio as much as we thought we would the big reason is because our girls sleep right there on that bed well really it's about right here and we don't want that door right there to be the only thing between them and the outside also rain we don't like to have our back door down if it's gonna rain there's been several people who have had issues with water getting into the deck and the deck end up having issues and falling off or being a big deal we see several people who always leave these out no matter what in the rain i'm sure it's fine we just don't want to leave it out in the rain and cause an issue that we might have to deal with but the biggest two reasons we don't use this as often as we thought we would having this door down makes the rv really hot Yes, we have this door right here that we can close off, but this rear AC cannot keep up with this back section, even with these doors closed that have the glass on them. You're just gonna let air out and that's gonna run all day. It's gonna make the whole RV hot. Also, if you wanna find out how many bugs are in the RV park, open this back door and very soon, they're all gonna be inside there with you. So there's a very limited time in the spring and the fall when the weather is just perfect that we enjoy the patio life. But as soon as it gets cold or as soon as it gets summertime, this thing hardly ever comes down. Not to mention, you have to have a site big enough to enjoy this. So when we measured in the beginning, we told you we needed 70 feet of site to have our RV parked in the site and have enough room to have the door down. We only get to use this back door about 50% of the sites we're ever in. If it's a back end, there's a 100% chance we won't be able to use it because we'll have to back all the way in to have enough room for our truck in the front. So that's why we don't use this back door as much as we thought we would, even though this is the coolest part about the RV. That is until today, I have come up with a product that might be a solution and allow us to use this toy hauler more than we do now. And it's this thing right here. The toy hauler door has been down, what, three minutes, uh -huh. maybe? I've been sitting here letting him have his snack and I've counted like three or four flies already that I see in here. In case y'all didn't know, Alicia really loves hanging out with flies. <laughs> flies are like my arch nemesis. I just cannot stand them. I think I'd rather have mosquitoes around than flies. Flies are disgusting to me. <laughs> well, good news is what's in this bag should help with the flies. So what is this right here? This is the Moride Patio EX. And it's supposed to make this entire deck another room. So what's the likelihood we ever get it back into this nice, neat, folded bag here? 100% chance this will never go back in this bag this way. <laughs> so where's it going when it doesn't fit in the bag? <laughs> <laughs> It's going in the loft in the attic with the rest of the stuff. <laughs> Who knew there would be so many pieces involved in a tent? Hey. Hey. So I know this part goes down first. Yeah? The rest of it, not sure yet. I like how you're just holding the camera and not participating in this. It's, it's like real tents. 
someone has to supervise. Just go get me Phil's chair and I'll be right at home. <laughs> Instructions. Easy to follow? Well, we're supposed to find some straps now and strap it around the corner out there. And then apparently we have to wear this jacket and <laughs> pump it up like that, leaning over very, as you can tell, he's already tired. <laughs> at this point, he's already tired of doing this. And that's, that's kind of where we are right now. I thought this was gonna be really easy. So far, we're just winging it and the instructions, they're worse than Ikea's. What you doing in there? Hey. <laughs> Don't suffocate yourself. <laughs> it says the, the, I'm trying to find the air valve. It says it's in the corner. <laughs> Too bad there's four corners, actually eight, if you count the top and the bottom. I just don't know where the bottom is. This, I think, is the bottom. Oh, the, I think I found oh, it. Oh, there it is, yes. Maybe? Yep, air. Yep. There That's not go. the corner the instructions said. That is not. <laughs> What could this be? Huh? I don't know. I don't know. First problem was it wasn't aired up and the wind blew a little bit and you saw it came tumbling around and hit you guys. Now we have it aired up and we have all the straps hooked up. Let's go check it out on the inside. I think it's pretty cool, but <laughs> I understand why people never take them down after they put them up, because that was way more work than I ever anticipated. It's not as easy as I and thought And I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, it was- And y'all got hit. Y'all tried to catch the tent for us. Yes, and it broke our GoPro. Yeah, a and, bit. and the track. tripod. <laughs> yeah. So y'all want to see what we had to work for? How do y'all like your new tent? Yeah. It's just good? You love it too. We can also get a take it from Bug. How many thumbs up do you give it? 130. 100. 130. I wouldn't give it 130 just yet. So we undid the privacy screen and then the vinyl screen that keeps the rain and stuff out. And now when we open this one, we'll have some cross flow of wind. Would you say it's so easy one person can do it? Negative. <laughs> <laughs> Two people almost couldn't do it. <laughs> Welcome to our air breathing tent. Kind of defeats the purpose if we put the tent up because of the AC and then we open all the screens. I know, but just the protection from the bugs, I think makes it worth it. It's kind of awesome. Bye. And we don't have to put, did you show them what we normally put down? Let me go no. grab it. Yeah, so normally we would have to put these down because of that, what's it stuff called? Rhino liner, Rhino liner. that we uh, painted on. It made it so rough for the kids so we would lay these out these little mats but with this it's nice and soft it still so. might be a good idea to put those down yeah if we were gonna have a long term this right are we gonna try and long term it you want to see what happens <laughs> it already blew off once in the middle of the day it's strapped down now it wasn't oh, okay. strapped down then i think it would be okay as long as there's no it says it's waterproof it says it's good for 60 mile hour wind too well, it needs to be strapped down for that. We <laughs> proved that wrong. Here is the tent with our soft floor installed. This is what it looks like from the outside. You can see because we have the Lippert rear patio deck and ours has the 45 right here that we had to fold those back and remove the back gate area because this is a square and our patio handrail area was not a square. I actually think it's awesome. I do too. I mean, it adds so much more space and I really thought it was gonna feel like closed in on you, but it's like super tall. I don't feel like it's short at all. So I think it's cool. It's not exactly easy to install in a hurry. It also takes two people and if the wind blows at all, it might just leave the back of the toy hauler. Now that we have the tent, does this change the way we use the toy hauler? I think that it could. I think we need to do an overnight with it out. I already love it way more than just the patio down because the bugs aren't coming in. And surprisingly, it's pretty cool in there. Once you unzip everything and get the crosswinds, it doesn't feel hot at all. I thought it might feel kind of like a sauna, like you're just baking in there, but it's nice. If it's not raining, I feel okay with it. But with the rain, I'm worried like, RVs leak 
without having a, a tent <laughs> attached to them. Now we're gonna try to see if it leaks with a tent and opening doors. I mean, it could be fine. It could be fine, but it also could not be fine. I say we test it out and see what happens. Y'all hear that? She wants to test it out. All the things that I mentioned today about this toy hauler right here that make traveling a challenge are also the things that make us love this RV. There's no such thing as a perfect RV, but there is a thing as the perfect RV for you. You're never gonna find something that checks all the boxes. You can find one that checks most of the boxes or the most important boxes, and that's exactly what this is for us. Our most important box was we needed to have a dedicated space for the kids, and then the floor plan, there was a few variations that we would have accepted, and then the rest of it was all the outside stuff. It came down to tank capacities, onboard generator, how much weight we can carry because we do carry a lot of things. So this one right here, although it's not perfect and there are different things you have to deal with by having such a big RV, this checked most of the boxes for us. Let's just say we were weekend warriors. Would you have a toy hauler? I think that I would, except I would have a true toy in the back. Yeah. I wouldn't have kid toys because they would come home to those toys. Um, so yeah, I think probably a, is there a smaller version? There is. Yeah, so a smaller, maybe not a drop frame like we have now, um, just to make traveling, make us a little bit more nimble. If we were weekend warriors, there's no way I would have an RV this big. I couldn't justify having something so big to take it out for a three day weekend a few times a year. It's just too much. For us, this is fine because we live and travel full time. What if we did three month trips? Would the toy hauler be what you would choose? Yes, because I am the type of traveler that I want to have all the comforts of home. I'm not a tent camper. I will never probably be a tent camper. Um, so a small RV, I just feel like the amount of time you're gonna spend shuffling rooms back and forth and spaces, if you don't have dedicated spaces for your children, I think it, just get the bigger toy hauler and enjoy your three month trip. I'm 50-50 on this. Part of me says, yes, I would still have a toy hauler if I went on three month trips every year. But then part of me says, if we're just going on a three month trip, let's go travel trailer. Because if you get any fifth wheel, even the, the regular traditional fifth wheels that aren't toy haulers, you're still dealing with the same problems. The height and the length. My thing is if I wanted to be nimble, I would want to be a travel trailer size so I didn't have to worry about what roads I drove on. And I'd want to be shorter so I could get in and out of places as quickly and efficiently as possible. My thing is, if you're not full time, I don't think you should have this traveling circus with you. Yeah, I mean, this is a lot, especially uh, for packing and unpacking. And I think if you're on a three month trip, maybe you're moving a whole lot more often than yeah. what we're moving. So maybe you're right about that, but it is so nice to have everything you need right there. We've made videos on what has broken in this RV and we use it quite a bit. So I just wonder on the flip side of that, if you're not using all these components often, are things gonna break even more? So it might be a hassle if you're not living in it full time. Yes, you may not have as many problems as I do, but you're gonna have more problems or different problems yeah. from it sitting in a storage unit for three to four months at a time before you use it. Ours is always ready to go. It's also always broken because we do use it every day, <laughs> but that's the trade-off. I think if you're gonna use it every day, this is okay. I couldn't imagine every time I wanted to use this thing, go to the storage unit and be like, well, I got seven things to fix before we can even leave. And then you'll have 14 to fix when you get back. <laughs> this goes out to all you guys out there that have toy haulers. Actually, if you have any RV, tell us the thing about your RV that you think is awesome, which also makes owning the RV not so fun. I would also like to know on your checklist of things you had to have like us, what's that one thing that you actually didn't have to have but you didn't know any better? For me, I think our second bath is that. We didn't need a shower. We, we thought we needed a shower. We weren't even looking at them if they didn't have two showers and two bathrooms, um, two full bathrooms. So I think if we did it again, we would only get the bath and the half. The second bathroom not, does not need to be a full bathroom. It just needs to be a toilet. I also think we don't need the generator like we thought we did. We don't need the 160 gallons of fresh water like we thought we did. I do like the black and gray, that's pretty convenient. But there's a lot of things about this RV I thought I had to have that now that we travel, I realize I actually don't need those things because that's not the way we camp. Right, I think it's kind of funny that we made this big huge list of things we had to have before we ever 
even spent one night RVing. Like we never had an RV before this RV. So how did we know what we needed? We just thought we knew what we needed because we watch YouTube videos. But I will say all of that aside, this is a great rig for us. That is the things about our toy hauler that we love and also sort of hate sometimes. But we love this RV and we've decided tonight we're gonna experiment. We're leaving the tent up overnight to see how things go. Alicia decided to let me show you guys <laughs> what it really looks like in the rest of the rv when we're making a video about the rv here's our bathroom <laughs> you think that's funny i just want people to understand like i don't like you to see our rv dirty but it's real life like in order to make that beautiful this is what's and going look at our bedroom everywhere else <laughs> alicia thought it'd be funny to show you the real side of what it takes to make a youtube video the toy hauler looks amazing the rest of the RV that we don't show you, <laughs> not so much. We're in the tent still. We actually left it up for three days, two nights. Yeah, it's worked out great, I think. It's been awesome having an RV that's 52 feet long. I mean, it's when you sit on the couch, the couch is like way over there now. I know, it makes it feel like double the size of what it was before. And the kids have loved having separate spaces to play in. Yeah, this thing is pretty awesome. <laughs> We're about to take it down because it's gonna rain tomorrow. So maybe it won't be so awesome in 30 minutes. I also wanna share a tip. So for anyone who has a toy hauler and has little kids, the little ramp going down is somewhat scary. But if you get one of these little mats, I think we picked it up at Walmart. It fits like perfectly down the ramp buddy what do you think about it oh yeah it's that good <laughs> he has been spending all his time out here he doesn't even care if it's filled with toys he'll come and lay on top of the toys just so that he can you, normally we had the little windows down letting the air through and he would just come and hang out back here and watch people pass by so i think he's even enjoyed it look at your little human he's bringing you an empty plate already uh-oh we're trying to let him have snack time so we can film and apparently snack time's over. <laughs> look at him, look at him. He's like, hey, 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 what's wrong, Bo? Is that all gone? Say, so where's the rest? You want more? You want some more? Oh, he's gonna go show you the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Wish us luck on taking this thing down. Hopefully it's easier than putting it up and hopefully we can figure out how to put it back in that bag. Oh! <laughs> Came down a lot quicker than it went up. <laughs> so far, this seems pretty easy. Like the air came out, now we just roll up, make it fit back in that bag. It's good to go, right? This is the easy part compared to putting it back in that bag. I can assure you. No, no, it's it's over with. It's done. Uh huh. Two thumbs up. Side note: If you want to know how good your marriage is, try to put this thing up in the wind. <laughs> I will say it almost caused a divorce. <laughs> if we had had two cameras rolling, you would have got to see the fun that ensued. But instead we had it set up out here and that's when it got blown over. But there were some harsh words said. You better tell them they were also on your side too. Oh, it wasn't one-sided. I will agree. But uh, yeah, test your marriage. Put one of these up. So we folded it in half first and quickly realized it wasn't going to fit in this. So then we did thirds, right? Thirds and then thirds again. <laughs> Lengthwise. It's a, it's a good it's a good indication. I'm not having to loosen the strap to make it work. Yeah, so hopefully this is I mean it does look a little bit bigger than when we I first. mean this isn't the way they package it from the factory. Perfect. <laughs> it's good to go. Alright, now for the true test. Okay. Alright, wait, wait. Whoa. <laughs> Don't go giving us success yet. <laughs> hey, you already said it was gonna go in just fine. Oh man, we might be testing the, the zipper out. So <laughs> should I start zipping? We haven't got it. We still have to put more things in. We're supposed to fit an air pump and all that other stuff. Uh-huh. That might have to live in a new bag. <laughs> we got it in the bag, but we have to fit these four other bags in here now. <laughs> Oh goodness, <laughs> bag one's already making it. It's okay. No. Thank you, though. Okay, good. Why don't you hand those to Daddy? Good helper. Yeah. Here's the test. Oh my goodness. The first try? It's actually easier to pick up than it is. To, or it's actually easier to take down than it is to pick up. 
to put up. Yeah, I think whatever. you mean. <laughs> hey, I'm having a film moment. I turned 40 recently. It's actually easier to take down than it is to put up. I agree. There was no yelling. <laughs> so we did good. <laughs> See y'all later.